You are listening to another presentation from the Environment Institute at the University of Adelaide. So what we've done is actually go back in time and resurrect a protein from an extinct species, in this case a mammoth. So we, we focused on hemoglobin because it's a very important protein uh, in the body. It binds oxygen and distributes it around the body. And it's also, in many mammals, such as ourselves, very temperature sensitive. So for example, mountain climbers get frostbite, uh, because, uh, particularly because as the extremities cool down, hemoglobin doesn't donate the oxygen to the tissues particularly well, it gets sticky as it gets cold. And so we figured that something like a mammoth, which had adapted to very cold conditions, may have undergone um, quite a bit of evolution within the hemoglobin. It was a bit of a guess, but we thought it would be a, a protein that would be under selection. And so this was a big step, being able to actually bring a, a functional protein back, because um, normally those sort of functions, the, the physiology of a, an extinct species, aren't fossilized. You can't work out how a species like uh, a mammoth functioned because the bones don't show you these, these things. So it was very interesting to actually go back and to get this protein out. What we did was we determined the DNA sequence uh, from bones, from permafrost. We put the DNA into bacteria and we made the bacteria grow the mammoth hemoglobin. And uh, once we had a large amount of this uh, mammoth hemoglobin, it's just the same as if you went back to a mammoth 40,000 years ago and, and, and took a sample from that, that animal. We, we could test it. We could apply modern scientific techniques to this mammoth hemoglobin and we'd work out how it functioned. And what we found was, uh, as we'd guessed, the mammoth had undergone some quite dramatic evolutionary changes within the hemoglobin. And in fact, we found um, a change, one in particular out of three that we found, was completely unique. It has never been seen before. And uh, what, it, what it causes is the mammoth hemoglobin to become uh, temperature insensitive. In other words, you can cool mammoth, or you could cool mammoth blood down, and it would carry on binding and releasing oxygen just like normal. And that means, we think, that the mammoth could allow its extremities to cool down um, and therefore it wouldn't be losing all this energy as heat out into the environment. It would, it would allow itself to, to cool off at the, at the far edges. Quite a clever idea if you're going to live in, in the Arctic. But really the, the big step is that this is the first complex protein that has ever been uh, resurrected, if you like, from an extinct species. And it opens the way to being able to study all sorts of other proteins from the past and studying many physiological characteristics and in that way, it's, it's real paleobiology, the you know, idea of actually looking at how our extinct species function and, and how they adapted to climate change and various other uh, past environmental conditions that we can't get at with the fossil record. But the project itself started uh, when I was back in Oxford University about um, 10 years ago when I got a phone call from uh, this Canadian scientist who sounded a little bit odd. And what he said was, have you ever thought about trying to resurrect extinct proteins? And in particular, I'd like to suggest mammoth hemoglobin. And I thought at the time, well, that's a very interesting idea, but obviously completely impossible. Um, but nevertheless, the concept of actually bringing back to life this functional part of an extinct species so we could study it was so important. I figured, well, we have to have a, have a go. And you know, here we are, it's only taken 10 years, but effectively it has actually worked. We've opened this whole new field up uh, where you can express uh, proteins from extinct species and analyse how they themselves functioned in a way that you can't access through the fossil record, which shows you the bones and the distribution of these things, but not the, the soft tissues and the, the function within the body. There are a number of opportunities for other extinct species. We're interested in looking, for example, at some of the marsupials, uh, the um, uh, marsupial tiger, the thylacine, um, but also many of the other permafrost preserved uh, bones uh, in the Arctic. There's all sorts of um, odd animals up there. But just in general, uh, the idea that we can, we can go back and make extinct proteins could be used for neanderthals or, or many other uh, extinct species. For more information on the Environment Institute, visit www.adelaide.edu.au forward slash environment. 
you can subscribe to our RSS feed, feed.theenvironmentinstitute.com.